I'm very happy to be back to Android after spending really the better part of a year using an iPhone 12, which is a great phone by the way, but I did miss what was already familiar to me. And now I did think of no better phone than the Pixel 6 Pro since I before that had the Pixel, uh, but after that I got the iPhone 12 and then before the iPhone 12 or the Pixel 4, I had the Pixel 2. Anyway, I've had a long history with Pixel phones from, I would say, 2017-ish. So I intended on releasing my video much sooner, actually, closer to launch day, but I felt like maybe that wouldn't be that useful to people who want to know if the magic of the Pixel 6 Pro sticks around after more than just one week or two of testing. So by now, I think that it's been a little bit over a month, or I should say really more than two months at this point, since I have been using this phone and I have a lot of thoughts. This is going to be my full review of the Google Pixel 6 Pro two months later. Let's dive right in. This video is sponsored by Privato VPN. This is one of the easiest to use VPNs that I have gone through because it just consists of a little tab around the bottom of your screen where you can do so much. Privacy is really going to be the name of the game here. Since your activity will not be logged, you can change the country and city that you're operating from to get access to foreign Netflix shows. And it really is as easy as picking another country and pressing the button on the bottom. So click on the link below in order to support this channel and choose the plan that's best for you. So that's going to be Provado VPN. Experience what the world has to offer from the comfort of your home. And as usual, I'm cheaping out and went with the base model. Just don't really need more than that. So this is going to be the $900 base model with a new line of chips from Google directly, known as Google Tensor. It's got 12 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, and a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So not much really changes for more expensive models, minus the storage itself, I believe, just depending on which configuration you go for. Also, I went with the black model since it's just my preference. Now, keep these specs in mind for the rest of this review since the Google chip in particular will really come into play a little bit later. The exterior design consists almost entirely of glass. You will still see that same pattern follow from, from both the front and the back of this device. The trimmings in the corners are comprised of either two different types of metals or just two different textures, I want to say. You do have the glossy black and the textured matte black around the corners that do look more like grayish, I want to say. There's also more contrast to be seen on the back since Google went with different shades of gray. And I have to say that in an era where almost every phone looks exactly the same. This one looks different from the rest if you look at it from the back. The front is really just the screen with a single hole punch camera and a curved display around the corners. So more on that very soon. But when it comes to this phone, you will get volume rockers and sleep wake button on the right with the SIM card slot on the left. And then on the bottom, there's going to be a USB-C port with a single speaker grill and you're also going to find a microphone. But I really want to talk about this display because I am very conflicted on some aspects, even to this day. This phone features a 6.7 inch 1440p OLED display that runs at 120 hertz, which is fantastic on paper and in practice. Every time I take a look at this display, I see the beautiful colors with an amazing amount of detail to whatever image you're looking at. I do know that I might sound like I'm gushing, but I've really only used phones with a 1080p display at best up until I got the Pixel 6 Pro, so I have spent a lot of time looking at this incredible screen, and I really love it. It does feel like a new experience to me. Now, watching content, looking through your emails, scrolling around, and gaming are all great experiences on this display, obviously, but like I said earlier, this is a curved display, similarly to Samsung's phones, and I don't really like that aspect about it actually in terms of its looks it does make the display look even better but it does hurt productivity because i do think that it's very annoying to tap things when they happen to be stuck on the edges of this display because they are tough to reach and i don't really find this display to be quite as responsive in these areas and i do a lot of typing on my phone and scrolling around so i do think that i use the entire screen pretty much at all times so sometimes that does get in the way and i do strongly disagree 
agree with that decision of going with a curved screen. However, hopefully the Pixel 7 will continue to have this display because it's also harder to hold as a result. Yeah, the only reason why this phone doesn't really slide off my hand every two seconds is because I got the leather case that covers the edges pretty well directly from Google. Yeah, but this display does look amazing. But it is a shame that they opted for a curved screen because of functionality issues specifically. I'm probably going to have two years to get used to that though, so I suppose that I can cope with that. Now let's go ahead and talk about something that's just objectively great in every way, the speakers. There are going to be two speakers on this phone. One of them is going to be at the very bottom, as I mentioned earlier, and another is actually going to be around the spot by the camera right on the very top over the display. These are the loudest speakers I've had the pleasure to experience on any phone, and they are totally audible, even with the AC on, back in October. Uh, so when it was still pretty warm at times, I want to say. And without any noise around, it still stands out as being very rich and loud. So with that aside, there are going to be many features about this phone that many will appreciate. So let's go ahead and talk about what this phone has to offer. This is a 5G capable phone. So that's really a great start already. It features three cameras with varying purposes and the focal lengths, which also have a lot of great software to easily make these the best cameras out there for any smartphone, but more on that a little bit later. It's IP68 water and dust resistant, certified too, and it can be charged wirelessly and even features reverse wireless charging for charging other devices like let's say your AirPods, I suppose, if you just feel like using those with this phone. And funnily enough, it's also going to have a fingerprint scanner embedded onto the display itself. This phone has a ton of features, great ones at that, but that fingerprint scanner is really the the only one that I have additional comments on besides the, the cameras. The fingerprint scanner is accurate and sometimes it's very fast, offering a very good amount of feedback too. So like that section is going to vibrate whenever you use it when confirming your print and unlocking. It's also great for use with apps that do allow use of biometrics to log in, such as your banking apps and so many more. But sometimes it is obnoxiously slow. It doesn't always work. And I would say that it has somewhere around an 80% success rate from my own experience. There have been a noticeable amount of times I want to say where my fingerprint either just isn't recognized at all or just takes a good few seconds to actually unlock my device, which isn't really Really fair. So this is a little bit harder. I don't even have a screen protector on this phone either. I feel like it should not be performing this way. This is something that really does need more improving. And while I'm not sure if a software update is really going to be enough to fix that issue, it definitely does need to be addressed by Google at some point, maybe with the Pixel 7. Now let's talk about the cameras here. I really like what Google did here. Both the front and rear facing cameras are capable of recording in 4K at 60 frames per second which is great for those who really pay attention to the sharpness on any given photo or clip. But I shouldn't really call the cameras on the Pixel sharp, but rather smart because with previous models, things got heavily sharpened. But this time, when it comes to things like photos, are actually going to be more pleasant on the Pixel now. Especially if you're using portrait mode, and you can still use portrait mode by using the wide angle lens as well on the front and even on the back. This is a fantastic camera and I have no complaints about the front facing camera quite frankly. And also when it comes to the rear facing cameras, which is going to be super important, we're going to have three. One for your standard content, I want to say, so it's got a pretty standard focal length. Another is going to be a wide angle lens for wide angle shots. And the last is going to be a telephoto lens for zooming way out there. Now, here are going to be my thoughts on those. The first two are great in my opinion, and as you can see, they definitely have a lot to offer. Great colors, good dynamic range, and again, the fantastic portrait photos. Also, this camera still has incredible stabilization, even in 4K. This is almost GoPro-like in terms of quality, and I am very confident taking pictures and especially filming videos thanks to that stabilization with this camera. But the colors... They're so nice. The Pixel will automatically adjust its colors to really give you the most appealing colors possible for you, 
Now, obviously, you can go ahead and turn this off if you don't want this feature, but I just felt like, like bringing it up, and I do actually like it. So, yeah, I am very happy with these cameras. The telephoto lens, I don't really care so much about, and honestly, it's super grainy even when zooming pretty far in, so I wouldn't really recommend using it. And now, this is going to be the gaming test. <laughs> Performance in something like Genshin Impact is going to be very good, but I don't really think that this game looks very good on mobile in general, for the exception of the iPad Pro. You do get great performance at at least 60 frames per second, and you can definitely have a solid play session. There is some artifacting, and it doesn't really look super appealing, but it does look quite good, I would say, at least good enough. And I think many of you will be very satisfied with the gaming performance on the Pixel 6 Pro regardless. So I have to say that Google's Tensor chip does do a very good job here. Next up is going to be the battery life. This phone lasts a very long time on its battery, almost regardless of what you're doing. I can watch videos for hours on this phone and definitely game for hours on end. Or I should say that, that I should be able to if this phone didn't do so poorly with thermal. Battery life is rated to last around 48 hours, but with normal to have your use, you can still expect it to have a decent amount of battery left the next day. There have been plenty of times where I have forgotten to charge it, and it does still have a good amount of battery, usually around 40% or even higher, which is insane. This phone is incredibly battery efficient, but it also gets extremely hot, even when doing small things like playing music or playing video. These are tasks that can definitely cause a phone to warm up, but I feel like the Pixel just gets extra hot when doing this. I don't know why, but this is also something that needs to get addressed. Now, it somewhat has been since this phone will shut off automatically if it does end up getting a little bit too hot rather than just completely overheating and crapping out on you thanks to Google's own software here. So, you know, Android is indeed doing its job. But this happens a lot more often than you might think, which is an annoying design flaw that makes me question how long this phone will actually truly last me. I have to be honest about that. So in conclusion, the Google Pixel 6 Pro is the best thing since last year's sliced bread, but I can also value what separates this model so greatly from previous Pixels. It has a lot to offer and I'm very happy recommending it at either the $600 smaller variant or the $900 Pro version that I'm holding right here. It's just that good to me. And the prices do look so great on paper and even in practice after you get your phone, you really feel like you get what you paid for. I'm still actively impressed by the Google Pixel 6 Pro. And there has been so much hype around it as well that it's really pretty difficult to ignore. So you do get a very solid recommendation from me. And now if you're interested in purchasing the Google Pixel 6 Pro or just the regular model, then I'll be making sure to leave affiliate links down to Amazon. But most importantly, there are going to be links to narrative slash Best Buy. So, you know, it, it is all going to lead you to the same place. If you end up using that link, you would be supporting the channel greatly. So I would so much appreciate that if you were to go that route. However, Amazon is still an option and that still supports the channel a great deal. So thank you so much if you end up using those. Also, I would love to give a very, very special thanks to all of my patrons, including the tier threes, which in this case are going to be Dodd, Alwazel, and Omar. Thank you so much for all of your support because it really does go a very long way. Also, let's give some credit to the tier twos coming right up. And this is super important. I would just like to give a very special thanks to all of our patrons, which are going to be listed right here on the screen. Again, a massive thanks to you all for supporting us to help us create the kind of content that we bring to you you on a day-to-day -day basis and thank you so much for supporting at the tech summit podcast as well and just remember that if you would like to be a part of this community too and then do make sure to check out the links to our patreon where you don't only get bonus episodes of our podcast but you also get automatically entered into one of our monthly giveaways of a tech product that we have reviewed that is of at least fifty dollars in value or higher so links to that down below and don't forget to follow me on Instagram, where I do post eh, kind of often. And don't forget to follow me on Twitch, where I do actually stream often enough, I want to say. So with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you so much for watching, and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy.